Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 8th grade concept of identifying proportional and non-proportional functions, specifically how we can do that in real-world situations, and we'll do it in 5 minutes or less. So we have two basic situations up here on the screen. We're going to identify whether they are proportional or non-proportional, and we'll talk about how to tell the difference as we are working through these problems. Let's look at this first one. So basic cost of purchasing home internet. So you've got two things working here. You got $99 a month and you've got a $125 installation fee, right? So if we wanted to put this into an equation, right? It would probably look like this. It would probably look like this slope intercept form. Okay, so we've got per month, right? So uh, that's going to be our independent variable. The cost, right, is what we're always searching for. That's our dependent variable. So let's say our cost is going to equal how much a month, right? We would say 99x plus, and then we've got this right here. It's positive. It's our y-intercept. It's our b. It's a 1. 25 a month. So you start with just 125 and then you do $99 a month. But you're obviously not paying that 125 every single month. So is this proportional or is this non-proportional? Well, by now we should know that proportional relationships have no y-intercept. It means they go through the origin. And this one actually does have a y-intercept. So this is going to be non-proportional because if we were to uh, graph these right if we were to say well what happens if we take our x and our y right if x is zero if at zero months look we're still paying that 125 right and if x is one now we're going to pay that 224 and so on so if we were to graph this it would look something like this, and it doesn't go through the origin. So there's our origin right there. And if we want to have proportional relationships, it needs to go through there, but it's actually going to start up here at about this 125, kind of move up that way with a slope of 99. So we could tell this is non-proportional simply because it has a y-intercept. It does not go through the origin. Let's check this other one. This one's a little bit tricky. Cost of gasoline for $3.25 per gallon plus, and we're thinking, oh, plus extra. That's going to be non-proportional. But look how they give it to us. 50 cents per gallon. Look, they get both of us per gallon. So I don't know why they split it up that way, because really it's just $3.75 a gallon. And so this is going to look kind of like the cost, right? So we're going to say Y. And our gallon is going to be our independent variable. And you got two of them right there. So it looks like we're going to have like y equals 3.25x plus you've got this uh, 0.5x as well because they're both per gallon. So we can actually combine those like terms. So we can say it's 375 Per gallon and this takes the form of direct variation y equals kx and if we have direct variation that means it's going to be proportional because there is no y intercept it goes through the origin right so if we take a few of our x's and y's if we've got zero gallons in either of these equations right here guess what we're going to get we're going to get zero cost one gallon, it's 375, so on and so forth. So if we were to graph this right here, it is going to go through the origin because it's going to go right there, and then maybe uh, one gallon for 375, something like that. It's going to kind of move up this way with that slope of 375. So that's the main difference. If you want to figure out whether something is proportional or non-proportional, right, we are looking to see whether it goes to the origin and whether or not it has a y-intercept.